But yeah, there's just like a, a deep, deep love for it. And it just feels so right. Every time I do it, it's like, yes, yes. Like, I'm like, I'm in line. Like, I'm, I know, I know who the fuck I am. I know where I am. Like, I know my purpose. I know. I just, it just feels right. It just feels correct. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the best way that I can put it. And then, you know, you'll do anything to, to continue that life. Cause like, that's, this is my dream life. You know, being a full-time artist, doing, having my entire life revolve around art and creativity and having my, my, my like social networks be somewhat related to that or completely related to that too. Um, yeah, just like, just being fully, fully immersed in the world of art and creativity, um, is my dream life. And and I, I mean, I definitely remember a time where, like, it wasn't like this, you know. And I really, I really wanted this so bad, and now I'm here, and and I feel like I will do anything to to maintain this. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Going Out, Looking In, the podcast where we're exploring the human experience through conscious conversations. My name is Maxi, I'm your host. Today, we're exploring the world of art, creativity, of God, spirituality, Love, grief, what it means to be human. This is a special conversation. This is the direct manifestation of something that I put out into the universe, which has been a new focus for me as a host of the podcast, where I want to be the best interviewer in the sense of the best space holder that I can be. And this is a testament to it. This conversation is the manifestation of being so finely attuned to the ether and to allow it to come through. It is <laughs> hard to describe with words. I'm speaking with Paula Camacho. She's an artist, she's a painter, she is a force of nature, a divine creator, a powerful woman, a curious spirit, a smart, fast, reflective thinker, and someone that I had one of the most present conversations with on this podcast. I met Paula through my brother, our brother, Alec, Otaro, Solimeo. Um, shout out to Alec if you're listening and watching this. Thank you. Thank you for facilitating this thread, this connection, introducing me to Paula and also for the three or four days that we've spent together in October. It was a magical journey that we've been on. And after having Alec having, so I'm speaking to you, Alec, after having you on the podcast, uh, this conversation is a testament to that time as well. So thank you. 
And I'm going to leave it at that. I set out and embarked on a new journey of like going different about these conversations. This is what came out. Um, I invite you to get your headphones out to, yeah, I don't know, do something that puts you in a state of where you're able to just receive potentially and then enjoy, enjoy this conversation, enjoy this flow, the stream of consciousness. We explored many topics um, and it is a beautiful testament what it means to be alive, what it means to be creating anything in this world. Um, what is that even? What is creativity? What is art? What happens when we create? Um, what's behind it? Where does it come from? Where does it go? And um, so, so much more. Um, I love you all very much. Um, and if you enjoy what we're doing, consider giving five stars on the podcast platforms. Uh, if, you, if you get something away, if you enjoy it, um, leave maybe some words, you know, get in touch, don't be shy. Yeah, that's, what, that's you know, that's where this is all about. It's about this like sending out something, receiving back something. And I'm here for it all. So with that being said, beautiful insights with this episode and Paula Camacho. What's alive? I am checking in with a lot of a lot of deep gratitude. A lot of this newfound abundance in my life because I just started a job that I really I really enjoy. Um I get to make money with a paintbrush in my hand and it's and I get to connect with people. So basically I'm body painting and face painting at this club over the weekends. And I only have to work two days a week. And it's just like it's changing my life, honestly. Like I I didn't expect for this to be so to for this to bring so much abundance to my life. And it's just such a night and day difference because right before my first day I was almost completely out of money. I was, I've never been, I've never been that broke in my life before. So yeah, big changes, big, big changes on the horizon. I feel like I just feel so hopeful and so joyful and like, like even though obviously none of my debts are fully paid off, I just feel like it's like now, now I know that they will be. Now I know that I can, I can take all this, all these different weights off of my back, these different financial weights, and I can finally like upgrade my life because right now, um, I, I live, I live here. This is my studio space. Um, and it's a secret. Um. <laughs> Whereas before I was living out of my car, you know that. Um, so yeah, I'm just like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Like everything is working out for me. Yeah. So what, what do you feel like has changed? I feel like my opportunities have changed. Like my realm of... Like things that were once out of reach are not anymore because I can afford them. And, you know, also like having experiences with friends. I remember I was, um, I was, I like wouldn't participate a lot because it would like cost a little bit of money, whatever. And so like, I would just kind of miss out on a lot of things. And also I was having a hard time relating to other people who, who like had like a normal life and like seemed, I guess, calm financially. I don't know. Maybe that was my own assumption too. Um, based off of like my own route was going through. 
But yeah, I, w- I was having a really hard time relating to other, like my other friends, you know, who had jobs. Because prior to this, like, I didn't really have a job. I was just like, I was just doing temporary tattoos at markets. But that was when it was warm. And I knew that that, that was going to, that was going to fizzle out once it got cold. So I didn't know what I was going to do. I had, I had a, a, many, many things that I was good, that I had to pay for in the future, like during winter. Um, so yeah, I was just, I was just pushing through. I was just powering through with my faith, faith that everything was going to, everything was going to work out in the end. Ultimately, like I take lots of leaps of faith and every time that I do that, there's always like a net that catches me, you know, and everything just kind of like comes together. Everything clicks, everything just, even, even at the very last moment, yeah, everything comes together. And I'm never left destitute. Never. I have so much faith. How, how do you cultivate trust in your life? Trust in, like, the universe? Trust in what you just described and things working out? trust in life i think yeah i think it's been mainly due to like this the my history of all of things working out and um and i like to write things down so that i can remember them and i can go back and have like all this evidence of all these things that have come to pass and all these things that have worked out um and I think that's a really powerful, that's been a really powerful practice for me because I have, you know, have that, that hard evidence in front of me that I can refer to. And I, I can't ever tell, I can't ever lie to myself and tell myself, no, like it's never gonna, like I can't do it or it won't happen or whatever. Like, yeah, obviously I'm not always gonna get what I want, but I definitely know that my life is always gonna work out for the better, even if it's not exactly what I want in the moment. Um... So yeah, that's that just looking at my history, that's helped me really strengthen, like cultivate it and then maintain that trust. And then it's like a it's like a loop because but the more trust I have, the more the more leaps of faith I take, you know, and the more risks I take and the more like, you know, the ballsier I get with life. And um, you know, in a good way, like I'm not reckless. But yeah, so I <laughs> so I'll do more of that and then then there's more proof that comes back to me that like everything will work out and like the universe meets me halfway and things click and yeah, it's amazing. So so I feel like just as time passes, this is just going to get more and more powerful and more and more amazing things will happen. So, yeah, I'm excited about life. <laughs> mm. And I'm happy to be living this life. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, like, I, I, I'm deeply inspired by that. I'm deeply inspired to hear that again from you um, after um, meeting you in person and, you know, hearing parts of your story and the setup of your life that is... (sighs) frankly also something that i am haven't been in touch with very often myself because of the yeah the background that i was growing up in you know it was all very um linear and very straightforward um and then also with the people around me and now i'm more and more opening myself up to also pursuing different different ways of living and being and working uh, myself and you know what happens you know the universe provides you with people places and circumstances that that mirror that and that sort of like magnify those those changes and so yeah you you were one of them and i was just like the more i understood around about your situation and the reality of that and the you know the struggles that come with that and the and the 
challenges and but also the opportunities you know it can go both ways right um that was deeply inspiring and i and at the same time i'm I, you know and the more i got to know you i was uh, i started to get really like sort of like you know uh, like as an empathic sort of being i'm like holy shit like i can just imagine how that must feel and how that and then at the same time you your job requires you and that's a hypothesis let's let's talk about it would like to hear your opinion about it but you know your your job requires some sort of freedom inner freedom maybe as well you know um while at the same time you know the outside is like caving in you know and it's getting tight and it's getting difficult and it, it's getting hard and at the same time the thing that could potentially get you out which is creating um relies on you being open and free so i'm like how do you get those two together Oof. Uh. That's a hypothesis, I mean, so let me know what you think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it definitely takes a lot of trust. Definitely takes a lot of believing in yourself and believing that that your that your art matters, and that your your art you you it takes. I think really just a love for it like i think it all comes down to that like a deep 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 love for it you love it so much that you can't imagine yourself doing anything else because you don't really want like nothing i mean i can i'm gonna speak for myself i don't really see myself doing anything that's outside of the creative realm you know, you know? i don't necessarily think i need to stay in you know the confines of painting particularly but but yeah there's just like a, a deep deep love for it and it just feels so right every time i do it it's like yes yes like i'm like i'm in line like i'm i know i know who the fuck i am i know where i am like i know my purpose i know i just it just feels right it just feels correct mm. and uh yeah, I think that's the best way that I can put it. And then, you know, you'll do anything to to continue that life. Because, like, that's, this is my dream life. You know, being a full-time artist, doing, having my entire life revolve around art and creativity. And having my, 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 like, social networks be somewhat related to that or completely related to that, too. Um, yeah, just like just being fully, fully immersed in the world of art and creativity um, is my dream life. And and I, I mean, I definitely remember a time where like it wasn't like this, you know, I really I really wanted this so bad. And now I'm here and and I feel like I will do anything to to maintain this and to like expand it and keep it going and like share it with other people and like lift other people up too like it's just it's just it's just my whole life it's my whole life it's it's my deepest love truly so can we lay some groundwork what is art where does it start for you where does it end what is it that's a big question what is <sighs> art um I guess we could rephrase that question as what is creativity for me? And for me, it feels like it's like a, it's definitely an expression of my soul, but oftentimes it also feels like there's something knocking on the door of my consciousness that wants to be let out. It wants to be manifested through me. And sometimes I get a little nervous that what if what if I wait too long and I don't manifest it and then it just chooses someone else to to bring it to life. You know, I don't know if that's just my own superstition. But uh yeah, yeah, it's a combination of like me, but something something else. Something else that 
wants to like enter this world through me. So I would I would answer it like that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And just I love that. I love that. It reminds me of Rick Rubin and uh about something that I think Prince or Mike like I think Prince said it about Michael Jackson. I think it was that way. So basically he said something along the lines of if I get an idea for a song, I better be quick and I better be ready because if I don't engage with it immediately, probably Michael Jackson will go and pick it up. <laughs> so oh, I think I've heard like that. This, it's like this ether, sort of like, you know, it's like the ideas are there, they're out there, so they're out in the ether. And then it's, and I like this idea, of, and that's what I got from reading Rick Rubin's book. It was just like, um, so me as an artist, like or a creative, whatever name you want to give it, like it is my job to make myself, like tune myself so like finely, uh, like an instrument so that I can pick up as many frequencies and hints that the universe might drop that I can leverage to create something out of. Yeah, that's that's a cool way to put it. Yeah, you need to uh, you need to be open in some way for that to come in. How do you stay open? It's a good question. I feel like I feel like I'm more open when I have a regular meditation practice. It's kind of fallen off lately, but mm -hmm. that oof, that really really opens me. I mean. And it helps me solve creative problems too. When I, I'm struggling to like finish something and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to continue meditation. Wow. Wow. And uh, yeah, also there's been times where I've been, I've been in my deep in my meditation and then I just, I like ideas will just kind of come through and I go and I write it down or I'll like draw it out or whatever. Um, because I don't want to forget that. There's a lot of cool ideas. Um, how else do I stay open? I think, I think doing other things too that don't involve art, like working out and spending time with friends, um, going on walks, hiking, you know, just getting the blood flowing. And when I had my guitar with me, I don't have it right now. But um, when I when I was in an art studio where there was a guitar, there'd be nobody there. I'd be the only person in the building. And uh, I would go downstairs from my little studio space. And it was like a big open kind of warehouse-y space, like event space. And I would just play guitar and sing. And I would, like the sound, I don't know, it would just bring me into an amazing trance. And it was like the, like part of it too was like the the stimulation physically was like my breath when i would sing with the guitar it was magical it was really magical and i really miss having a guitar at my disposal soon but that that mm. was definitely music is definitely one of the ways that that i feel i can like loosen myself and like channel some kind of energy that i can't even explain yeah, that's that's a whole that's a whole different realm, for sure. For sure. Wow. Hmm. What kind of music do you listen to right now? What moves you? Oh man. I I like a I don't even know how to describe it. But I think there's there's one genre that I do know how to describe, and that's bass music. And I Denver is the bass music capital of America, if not oh, the world. Wow. I don't really. Hmm? There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. The music scene is here is so great. Like it's just it's what I love. And uh, but that that's not the only thing I listen to. Uh, I listen to like. 
I like music with deep, like a deep emotional undertone. Like I feel like it's like taking me on a on a journey, and like I like to make it. I like that it makes me feel like like this <laughs> this movement. I guess like watery, like flowy, like yes, like or like we're going on a mission or like that kind of vibe. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that you describe it that way. Um, because the genres that I'm listening to are all different, but I would say that there is like a commonality amongst all of them, which I used to describe as like a, like. Yeah, I mean, harmonic, like harmonious sort of sounds and harmonies. So a, b a beautiful voice. And all of that is obviously highly subjective, right? So what's beautiful to me might not be beautiful to somebody else. But so when I say beautiful, like I, I have a certain thing that I like really love if when people just, I don't know, able to sing. So... A beautiful voice, um, beautiful harmonies that are harmonic, that are sort of like melodic. That's a nice word that I can use. So melodic. So there's like, for example, I listen to mostly singer-songwriter, pop, blues, soul, R&B. Um, but then I might listen to some more like progressive rock. But then it will have a, a beautiful voice. And it will have melodic elements in it. Um, and the songwriting will be uh, maybe pop influenced. It will have um, some elements of those other genres. Uh, and it will, but it will penetrate the same frequency within my heart that gets me to open up and say, fuck, that's beautiful. Um, so the best way that I like, do you know Sam Fender by any chance? No, Sam Fender. It's like a, he's like a UK uh, singer songwriter, but he's more more like making like rock music, and he's like you know he, they, they they named him like sort of like you don't know the new Bruce Springsteen or what what have you, um, and this guy is just like yeah he's like doing that to me for example. So his his songs are usually a little bit more like progressive and hard that the stuff that I usually would listen to, but at the same time it penetrates the same. Like it, it hits the same spot within me and I'm just cracked open and I just can't help myself to, to sing and dance and cry and have the whole range of the human experience with listening to his music. So, um, and then, and then recently due to, you know, getting more into ecstatic dance, I'm into that kind of music, you know, ecstatic dance kind of shit, you know, like w what is that even? I don't even know what kind of name to give that, you know, D but you, you'll, you'll know. You've you've been to the ecstatic 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 dance before? Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. How do you like it? I I love it. It's <laughs> I mean, I've always I've, I've grown up being told like you have to learn how to dance because you're Hispanic and like how are you gonna be Hispanic and I don't know how to dance? But okay, they were pushing like a particular dance genre onto me, but ecstatic dance, you do whatever you want. Like you move how the music how the your body wants to move according to the sound you know what i mean like you let the sound move you you're not like doing like one two step one two step like it's just it's just whatever so i i love it i love it it's, and it's just like such a judgment-free space and everyone is also just with their own flow with their own flavor of movement it's it's lovely i love it i haven't been to one in a while I want to be open. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, potentially also like something to to you know, use as as a tool for staying open or staying receptive, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, one thing is to do it by yourself in your room and then another thing is to like go out and like mix the energies with others too. That's that's always interesting. You dance yeah. for yourself sometimes? Yeah, just by myself, like one party of one ecstatic dance with my 
with the music that I described to you, either bass music or or that deeply emotional, like mysterious, complex melodies. Mm. Is there any other things that you you do to create a space to create? Um, any rituals, any ceremonies, music, substances, <laughs> environment, <laughs> whatever. I think I think first of all, my space needs to be pretty organized, and then oh, right. yeah, and then when it comes to painting, um, I need to sit down and just like get my things out and you know, get the gears turning, get a few brush strokes on the canvas and if i'm like feeling really stuff or I've, i've been feeling really stuff then yeah that's what i have to do i have to start getting the gears turning and then i smoke some weed and then i go back to the canvas and it's like oh like i feel like i don't have to labor over every decision i don't have to overthink everything that i'm doing i have like a piece right here that i'm like <laughs> that I'm, i'm like fighting with so like i'm looking in that direction but <laughs> but yeah Yeah, I get out of my own way. Like the weed really helps me to get out of my own way. And uh and I'll turn on like a a really good podcast or audiobook or something. Something like sometimes like music can be a vibe, but sometimes I want to skip it and then that just becomes a distraction on my phone. It's a slippery slope. So, so yeah, I feel like a really good insightful thing or uh, a phone call even phone calls are, are great for me they're so good i'm not thinking about any decisions i'm making on the canvas i'm just doing it i'm just it's just i'm in motion and i get so much work done it's great it's really great yeah um you you mentioned something earlier about about beauty and that it's all highly subjective and that what you find beautiful someone else might not find beautiful um i don't know there, there is there is something so mysterious about beauty the concept of beauty like the reality of beauty what even is that what even is that because yeah earlier i mentioned that my work is a combination of my own soul's expression and also like something coming in something coming through and the way that i execute that i strive for the highest level of beauty that i can possibly manage to create and the piece is not done if it's not beautiful in my eyes there's something so mysterious about about beauty yeah and it's it's mm -hmm. something that that plays such a big role in my life not just with my art but you know with like my surroundings my like my my living space like i need to make my living spaces as like increase the beauty level i don't even know how you would even quantify that or yeah but it, yeah again i mean it's all subjective it's it's entirely subjective and um i feel like living here in Colorado is just in the southwest in general there is so much there are so many different places that are so accessible to me where i can find such a such a very saturated amount of beauty that i can just like drink up mm. yeah what are your thoughts on beauty I want to put it in a question for you then later. I'll 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 answer. Um and I'll, I'll I have a question um because it ties into how I feel about it. Um it penetrates a space within me. Um I cannot name that place. I can just say how it feels. It 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 opens me. It may it moves me. Um and that's how I how I judge or how I know that uh I 
just found or look at something beautiful. So this is the same fre a frequency maybe. So it's a frequency. So when I when I when I was looking so in the preparation for this, I was looking at your paintings, right? And I took my time. So I just I would just look at one. And I would just see what's happening within me. Does something happen? And what is it? Um and not what is it that I have to give it a name. It's more like uh, I was more investigating the body um, and if, uh, what, I, what I feel. Um, and I think the best way that I can describe it is just like this sort of like, it's like a sigh, it's like a... <gasps> you know, that's, 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 a, then, that's an expression of beauty for me seeing something beautiful, hearing something beautiful, engaging with something beautiful, uh, having a beautiful conversation. Um, it's like this, like this relief. It's like I can drop the shit. I can drop the weight. I can let go. I can ease in to what is in front of me. Um, and then this, my, my body has this somatic response where it relaxes resulting in a sigh or something like that so i'm like oh my so then then words may come you know you say something you put a name to it but obviously it starts way deeper um and i also feel like beauty has something to do for me with with like no filter with like an immediate expression of god that so the the less layers between what i see hear smell feel whatever are there to where it this is coming from the more i find it beautiful does it make any sense what I'm saying? Wait, the more layers. Not nah, the so the fewer layers there are to something that I'm looking at or that I'm perceiving, um, that I can identify um and pick up on, the fewer layers there are that divide or separate that thing from its source, from God. The fewer the layers, the more beautiful I find it. Oh, interesting. So the closer... So nature, for me, is the most beautiful thing that I can see or that I can immerse myself, that I can perceive, I find. Because to me... Oh, no, I'm, I wouldn't even say that. But I would say that it's very... Nature is like the, one of the closest expressions of the divine, of source, of God that we as humans can perceive. That's why I find it so incredibly beautiful. There's no inter interference. There is no fucking distraction. There's no, it's just a, di it's just like direct, you know, it's immediate. It's like fucking right there. And that's what strikes me. Yeah. Yeah, that, everything you just said, I don't think I've ever put it into words, but I've definitely felt that, that, that nature feels like the most direct line to God because it's, it's unadulterated. It's unmanipulated. It's not manipulated by human beings. It's like not created by human beings, you know, like, sure. We can move it around. We can manipulate it. We can like, manipulate the gene expression and whatnot but like we didn't invent plants and rocks like these things are just there they're just of their own accord you know we didn't decide that that they get to exist like that wasn't our decision they just they just spawned because that's what nature decided was gonna happen 
you know, or God or whatever you want to, like the universe, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's, that's really, really um, on point, mm. I think. Yeah. Um, sex, like intimacy, I would say, um, is a portal uh, to God. Um, David Dada's work, his whole thesis, his whole, like, that's around that. Like, that's like finding God through, um, through intimacy or through human interaction, like close human interaction in a space where I guess you are so intuitively connected to one another that it is divine that the divine is just like f flowing through so mm -hmm. i feel like that's another portal that is if lived like if experienced that way like obviously there's layers to it and there's different ways we can experience intimacy and share it. But I feel like if it's um, experienced and done very consciously, it can be a portal to God. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think there's a lot of beauty in interpersonal connections. Yeah. And like we're wired for it. We need we need that for our survival. And when it just clicks in such a beautiful way, yeah, there's something just really, really, really special there. For sure. Yeah. It's interesting to explore I guess like the other the other forms of um beauty that still feel very very like raw very natural very like we we didn't exactly decide this like god decided it god put it together god designed it in this way yeah are you i what's your relationship to god like i would say It feels like a, I call it I call it an it. I don't like to assign a he or she. It's just like a thing that's everywhere, and it knows. It it knows what I know, and it knows more than what I know. And it's just like scheming up some plans for me, and doesn't bother to tell me, hey, don't worry, don't worry about this, because you got something better. That. I have to figure it out. I have to like tell myself that. And then and then God comes in and and just surprises me in like lovely ways. And uh I have had a couple experiences where um like there will be a moment where I'm just really disappointed for whatever reason. And it's just really, really weighing on me. And then something in my day happens that just feels like a cute little, like a cute little nudge. Like, hey, like, don't cry. It's okay. <laughs> like, um, the most recent example, I got, I got a rejection from this art residency that I really, really, really wanted. I mean, like what I would have received would have been incredible. I mean, considering especially like at the time I was living out of my car, I would have had a whole year of free housing in like a really nice apartment. That that was part of it um, here in Denver. And yeah, they got my hopes up, whatever. Then I got the rejection letter and that was just like such a deep heartbreak. And that same day, like randomly, like these people came to my to my studio space and... They like they happened to knock on the wrong door, but um they were passing around like these little what's the fucking right door? 
<laughs> yeah, wrong door for them, but right door in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> and they were passing around like these little pastry things. Um, and I don't know, like they were like, oh, okay, oops, like my bad, like the wrong door, but like, do you want some? I was like, fuck yeah, that's so cute. And then something else happened that, that same day where um, this man who like ran that, one of the people that ran that art studio that I was in, um, he really, really fucks with my art and really believes in me as an artist, which is so adorable and like such a blessing. And so he invited me to go to the art store and just like pick out things that he would buy for me. And oh, wow. He bought me a bunch of shit, and it was so, <laughs> it was so sweet. <laughs> so it's just like, it's things like that, things like that. There was another time where, um, I just got out of a medicine ceremony, and like nothing happened. I, there were no takeaways, and and I was so disappointed. Also because like I always had to scrounge together the money to go do these things and to like not have anything like not get anything out of it like was just like a big frustration for me um and so i was like th the ceremony was over whatever like it was morning i was walking and um and i felt like i literally felt like something or someone tapped me on the shoulder and i turned around like nobody was behind me but i like noticed the morning sky and in the distance there were a bunch of hot air balloons it was so cute. It was so beautiful. And it just felt like, it felt like, um, I don't know, like God was like, just wanted to soothe me or something like, hey, look at this. Like, don't be sad. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. I feel, I find God to be a very sweet, um, energy with me. Um, and I think as long as, as long as I listen to my intuition and as long as, you know, like I stay aligned, then, then God, I feel like God is more willing to work with me. God is more willing to do more on my behalf versus like if I were just doing something, if I... I'm just like fucking around with my life, like not showing up for myself or for other people or for just, just for my life in general and just wasting my time, wasting my talents. Um, yeah, then, then, then less happens, you know? Yeah. How did you arrive at this understanding of God and yourself? I think just just through the the multitude of experiences that I've just had um I kind of just cobble them all together and it just forms this composite picture that is still very incomplete because you know God is such a mystery and I don't think it's ever going to be anything that anybody can say with certainty like this is what it is I think the closest thing that yeah, the closest thing that I have come across is the concept of the Tao. You know, the thing that the thing that does nothing but leaves nothing undone. undone. And that permeates everything. Um, so the theory of immanence states that the divine permeates the mundane. And that feels very godlike to me. Definitely. The divine permeates the mundane and does everything, I mean, does nothing, yet leaves nothing undone. Like those two concepts, that, that really feels like God to me. I might have strayed away from the question, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, How do that, you... Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just flowing. How do you conceptualize god what does that feel like
Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the Tao. I, in this incarnation, have done relatively to my age quite some work within the Zen Buddhist tradition. And the symbol for Zen is the the circle, right? So a Zen meditative practice is to paint that circle with a brush, with one brush stroke, right? So that's the that's the the Zen Buddhist sort of technique. And the more, you know, and you know, it, it, there is some sort of like theory that the more you do it, the more like uh, complete you get in making that circle. But that whole thing in the Zen tradition is a paradox because the circle as a symbol is closed but it's also open because it's not fully closed. So it, it, it's black and it's white on a white canvas. It is full. It can be full. You can fill up something, but at the same time, we're looking at it, it can be empty. So the whole, there's so, like I could name a million examples of Zen stories where it's all about reminding you of something being full and empty at the same time, creation being everything and nothing. That's what I said at the beginning of this conversation. There's nothing to do, nowhere to go. This is the Zen way. There's nothing to do, nowhere to go. And at the same time, there's a lot to do and a lot to, you know, a lot of places to be everywhere. And so... I believe God, or that's how I experience it, creation, source, as something that is yeah, it's you and me, everything in between and nothing at the same time. Another Zen saying is, is it this, is it that, or none of those? Um, and I feel like the more I'm contemplating the existence of God within me, or for my understanding, what I can make sense of, the more I definitely come to the understanding, not just cognitively, but also in my being, that it has the, <laughs> like that 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 this is highly temporary and I guess has the least to do with God itself. Like who I really am is God, right? So, oh, okay, I just dropped also something that I understand as God is, <laughs> is, <clears throat> well, the space that we're speaking from, um, I had Richard Lang on the podcast, who is a direct disciple of Douglas Harding, who is the inventor of the Headless Way, which is a philosophy of contemplating us humans being headless. So it, it originated from a painting of an artist in the 1900s where he painted himself as a POV in his studio, in his office. And you can see what you see when you paint yourself. You see body starting roughly around here going down and then you see a room and you look at this picture and yeah Douglas Harding was just looking at this picture and was just like fuck like I, I don't have a head 
I'm headless, you know. I've never seen my head. I will never see my head. So what is it? Where is it that I'm looking out of? Like I'm j it's just this space. And then I'm moving my hand and it's just like I'm looking at it and it's just like it it just disappears into the space behind me. And if I close my eyes, Uh, where does my body start and end? Where does my existence start and end? It doesn't. It just fucking doesn't. It just is. It's just a space that we are looking out of, that we're speaking out of. It's just a space. It's definitely non-material. And if you're like, yeah, like I said, the Hatter's Way has countless examples, like experiments that you can do where you can investigate it, where, where it gets really clear placing objects on a table and then you got 10 seconds to arrange them in a for what you would say a meaningful order and those things and those objects should be completely independent of each other and non-related so not like letters or something like that they should be like a bottle and a pen and a mouse and a plant or something like that And then it's just like, okay, in 10 seconds, I'm arranging them in a what I would consider meaningful order or like a, an order. So you just place it somewhere. And then the question is like, where did that come from? You're looking at a creation that you just made. You look at those objects being placed a certain way. So they, maybe you arrange them so that they make a shape or whatever. Where did that come from? Where the fuck did that come from? What are you looking at? Is it an arrow? Is it a is it a letter? What did you is it a circle? Like where did that come from? Well, certainly not from Maxi. What the fuck? Like <laughs> certainly not from me. That for me that was just like okay, it has nothing to do with me. Not nothing. N no thought that I think originates from me. I'm just a recipient of those thoughts. They come to me, yes. But the origin of them, I'm just here to receive. And, it's, and, and it got so clear once I saw those objects. I'm just like, yeah, I have absolutely no fucking idea where that come, came from. I would never able to to be able to tell you. Um, writing a song. Where does that come from? <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. And it's not, it's the same. So it's the same chair. I'm looking at my, my, my thing here. Same chair, same guitar, same room, same this year, same me. Five days sitting down every night, same time. Well, different things happen. Sometimes something sticks, something comes through, and sometimes not. So clearly, so clearly, this is way bigger than than I am. Yes. Because I show up. I'm just showing up. I just show up. That's all I do. I just show up physically, putting the guitar in my hands, waiting, getting in motion, doing something. Something happening? Hmm... No, not this time, not this time, not this time. The fifth day, something happens. Maybe, I don't know. But that's God. It's not me. Um, There's a lot that I said, but <laughs> fuck, yeah, that's what I feel about it. Or some things that I can say to describe it. I don't know. That was That was really, really insightful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, there's there's something really uh there's something interesting about what can come through in the process of showing up and doing something. Because we can't just sit around and and hope for the inspiration to just hit us like a lightning like a lightning bolt, you know. I mean, e even getting hit by a Getting struck by lightning is so, like, the odds are so low of that ever happening to you. 
I think it's the same with inspiration. If you just sit around and, huh, just kind of like hope and pray that it comes to you without like doing your part and trying, it's not gonna, I mean, it could, but you could get there a lot quicker if you, if you, if you put yourself in the position of like creating what it is that you, you, you're hoping to create, create and yeah, like acting as if, as if you have the inspiration with you already and just going through the motions and, uh, yeah, like acting as if you, you already have, you, you have already, um, how do I say this? I think, I think the process is the same when it comes to manifestation. You know, a lot of people, you hear a lot of talk of like people saying, you know, law of assumption, acting as if like walking as though, mm. like moving about life with like a different like air to you, like a different attitude to you. And this is like, you're like embodying the person that you aren't really yet but you want to be embodying like the life that you want to have acting as if you already have it and going about the world as if yeah you already have it and and you know a lot of the time it does come to pass you do get that life that you want you do become that person that you you were um pretend like i don't even want to use the word pretending but trying to embody, trying to embody that person that you, you wanted to become and soon enough you become that person, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel some resistance to that idea. Uh, I've heard that before as well. Um, no, no, very right of the bat intuitively feels somewhat like inauthentic to do that like to i don't know let, let me put it another way like i i i get very suspicious when things get heady and when i have to you know if i was to imagine a certain version of me and then remind myself to embody that so to carry myself that way to speak like that to whatever um i don't know I, I i feel like i would not be able to be just as present with what is as i am doing just what i am doing right now which is mostly being trying to yeah trying my best to just be present with what's here right now with this and how i am right now um does that mean i'm being stagnant i don't think so um I don't think so. Uh, but there's like a trying, like you're, you're trying. You said you're trying to remain present with what is. Why are we trying? Yeah, it's interesting as you say that because I. Yeah, it's very interesting that you pick up on that because I'm super aware of when I'm using the word trying because somebody else pointed that out to me it's like do not try as yoda right star wars like do not try so i'm like i'm super aware of when i'm using try because i think language is powerful and i do think before i speak most of the time <laughs> um so i say try because because being present to me coming back to be like God and the universe and source working through me, I feel like being present is my job on this earth is to be present so that then stuff can happen through me. It can only happen if I'm present, if I'm open. So I feel like that's a challenge of the human experience also to some degree to overcome all of the dis distractions that we face uh, on a sensory level, you know, all of our senses being penetrated so multi-dimensional all the time, 
dead. It can be drawing us in so quickly. And yeah. And then on top of that, there is other humans who use their cognitive capacity to develop techniques and tools and methods and de devices and gadgets and technologies to do exactly that, to pull our presence away from what is and make us, you know, consume what they want us to consume and to, to pay attention to what they want us to pay attention to. So I'm trying to be present to the best of my abilities in the sensory suit um, to, 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 to be less distracted by my senses, I'm, I'm, I guess, and to return to source. So basically carry insights from meditation into my life because at me when I'm meditating, that's, that's the only thing I'm doing. Um, but then there is life, right? Um, yeah. Um, what does that do for you? Yeah. I mean, I wonder if, um, all of these manufactured distractions, like that, that is also, I think, what is, in a sense, mm. you know. So where, where does, you know, where, where's that line? You know what I mean? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. these things are trying to that. That's the attention economy. These, there's a lot of things that are competing for our attention. And I guess the real challenge is like what, what. You know, deciding exactly what it is that we want to invest that attention into, because that's where all our time and energy will go, and that's like our most precious freaking resource. Um. So. I yeah, I think I think those things are also what is, <laughs> but what exactly, what exactly is it that you want to be present with? Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, 100%. I'm yeah. with you, 100%. Well, it's bullshit what, I'm, what I just said, actually. So, <laughs> so no, no, but no. Like, no, no, but this is like, this is like I'm learning, I'm, I'm processing. So, some, so, no, like I have, a, I have an idea what it means to be present. I have a, it's a preconceived fucking thing that I consider to be present. Whereas I can be, yeah, I can be very present with my phone. Can be. No, I can. So it's not the device itself. It's not the thing itself. You know, that's like with money, you know, it's all neutral. I give it the meaning. So do I say these things are making me less present well then sure they do <laughs> but yeah, that's um, what it is. sorry i guess it's it's it dep it's dependent on what exactly it is you you ideally would want to be present with yeah it's keeping you away from being present uh with that that priority yeah exactly yeah there's a million things we can do to be present or like that we can do being present. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, it's actually, that ties into a question. I wanted to ask you, like when you look at the painting, so you paint <clears throat> and is there a differentiation between a paint, what else? There's different layers to that question or m various things. So I know songwriters, they write 100 songs and then one makes it to a song, what they would consider a song of theirs. And then they say, so that's a song, right? How's it with you? What's your process? Like, is there 100 pictures? One makes it? Because I know songwriters, they write, they start a song and they finish it and they put it out. That's it. They write the next one. 
And then there's a different layer to that question, but I think we have to unravel it bit by bit. So do you see yeah. that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, in my process, there's definitely many uh, different iterations of a final piece. Um, but before I even get to those iterations, I need to just, I need to just think less and do more. And that means, um, that means drawing or, and judging less what it is that I'm doing because ultimately they're, they're just little scribbles in my, in my sketchbook. And, and, uh, I will even like, I'll draw like a little like square or like a rectangle, whatever the shape of the canvas is that I want to put something on. I'll draw that shape in my, in my sketchbook and it'll be like this tiny and there will be a bunch of them on a single page. And I'll just do something quick on each one. Quick, 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 you know. And uh, I'm trying really hard not to not to think about it too hard. And eventually, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get away from that page for a little while. And eventually I'll come back to it. And one of them will kind of just pop out for whatever reason. And then that's when I start making, like... A couple iterations of the same thing or sometimes i'll just go straight to the canvas without without like making various versions before like deciding on a final version um yeah sometimes i'll just go straight to the canvas and figure it out there which is kind of hard <laughs> it's always really hard actually but um but yeah yeah it's like i said earlier if it's not beautiful it's not done and if it's not done i don't want to put it out there Although yeah. sometimes I, I do I do like putting like progress photos, but just like a little like a good part of it, like something that still has like a good amount of beauty in it. And that's just like that's just like a satisfying enough amount of beauty for me to post it. Um Yeah, and then sometimes there will be random drawings or doodles or whatever in in my sketchbooks. Even older ones that I'll I'll just be going through an old sketchbook and I'll just feel so inspired by something that I that I drew there and I'm like okay let's expand on this you know I do feel like I'm beginning to box myself in a little too hard in my body of work because you know if you if you look at if you look at my body of work you know everything is everything is kind of similar which is which is good because then it's cohesive and also people can like look at your piece and be like oh that's that's hers you know she made that one um but at the same time i feel like like i'm kind of running out of juice a little bit when it comes to like landscape like yeah landscape stuff so actually the things behind me right now these are like tiny as hell but, um, yeah, these are just like little explorations, like little, little, you know, venturing off and playing a little bit more. Whereas these other pieces feel a little too serious and it doesn't feel like I'm playing enough. And I feel like I need to bring back that energy of play because I don't want to, I don't want to like feel like I'm toiling and struggling all the time doing something that that uh that i know i love which is painting like i don't want to end up hating painting and resenting painting so i think i need to really i need to uh allow i i not that i need like i don't want to let me lately i've been trying to allow more flexibility within my process and within what it is that i allow myself to create like Yesterday I painted a, a flower pot and uh, it's actually this one that's right right there <laughs> and it's just a bunch of little designs it's just a bunch of little things that aren't anything that you can look at and be like that's that's a thing in the world no like they're just they're just little forms and I have a lot of that going on in my sketchbooks too and and I think my art is really trying to like move into that direction a little bit more still combining some elements of of realism here and there and like things things that are identifiable objects 
like rocks and plants and whatever in the sky but but more of that more of that abstract stuff more of that inner geometry um yeah what why why <laughs> is it coming from yeah i think it's it's just part of the the ebbing and flowing of things i think i think I think I'll go through phases where I'm interested in something and then like I juice it and then there's no more juice. And so I'm interested in something else. And then I juice that and then I, I kind of like come back to that previous thing and, and it, it'll just be like a, a, a coming and going and it's, it's all fine and it's all good. There's nothing wrong with any of it. Um, it's really just, it's really just me, like my own judgment of it that gets in the way because I feel like, oh, like I need to be creating work that like yep. looks like the rest of my work and it needs to like yep. be cohesive all the time. No, like I, I can, I can relax. Like I feel like I, sometimes I tend to forget the fact that this thing that I am, that I'm living in, that I, that I, uh, this thing that is art, it can be whatever, then there's no rules. And, and all the rules are really just self-imposed. Yeah. And, um, this whole thing about my, uh, my, what I said, inner geometry, um, for some reason it's kind of bringing up, uh, like Islamic art, particularly like their, their, their architecture, like their if you've ever seen the, like the inner part of like those cathedrals, like it's just yep stunning like the geometry it's stunning and you know in uh in islam they don't have icons necessarily they, i don't yeah they don't have icons i'm not i'm not super educated on all of this but i just know that they don't have icons so they do they do that instead they do this incredible architecture and these incredible geometric designs Instead of icons like Christianity does, where we like we put, or like Hinduism, like the there's so many there's so many different like figures that are that are just um, rendered in various ways, you know, in paintings and sculptures and whatnot. Um, but in Islam, there's not there's not that, and I find that so fascinating because. I find that so fascinating when I think about my own psychedelic experiences where I never really see anything that is a thing in this world that I can identify. It's just geometry. It's just like, it's, it's still gorgeous. Like it's beautiful. And, you know, I really feel, I feel the divine so, so there with me. So in my face, when it comes to those experiences of experiencing, yeah, that, 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 that inner geometry. And then you go, yeah, I don't know really, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but, um, it's just a fascinating concept. And, uh, and I think that's definitely another, another aspect of nature, you know, that the, the, the artwork, I guess, that is, created internally you know using mm. meditation or psychedelics or breath work or any one of those kind of things i think that's definitely part of nature and definitely something so so be something i find so gorgeous in nature the fact that that's a thing that we can experience yeah it's incredible it's incredible and i think it's really interesting how um it, in islam perhaps though that geometry is how they represent god instead of putting a face to it mm. god the divine you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, it truly is um, intentional. 
Interesting. Never um, never looked at it that way. But it makes a lot of sense also intellectually. Um, it's it's funny that we speak about that because I just yesterday I saw a video that resonated deeply with me basically showed a bunch of what you just said symbols of different religions subline was something like where people go to find god and then it said and it showed a bunch of um churches and holy sacred places but a lot of statues and faces of masters and gurus and whatnot and then it basically switched to where God is actually residing or actually showing him it herself. And then it was just, it was nature. It was people connecting with each other in a way that seemed pure, raw, intimate, authentic. Um people being creative so yeah it encaps encapsulated that very well what we are i guess trying to articulate here or what we're like already articulated and what you just so beautiful beautifully pointed out um what are you what are your feelings thoughts around religion talking about these kind of things i think i think they all have wisdom that we can learn from i personally am not one to stick to a single one you know fully ascribe to one i feel like that's very limiting i feel like i've learned a lot from the ones that i have studied and uh and from the people who who study them too you know that's a whole other thing too to be to be in close relation with people with a bunch of different people who practice different faiths everybody practices different faith and they all have their own way of explaining the divine and explaining like different processes and the nature of reality the nature of how the, the universe works and everything it's i think it's that's really really fascinating too I love mm. learning. I think I think they're all they all have a piece of the puzzle. They are they are all a piece of the puzzle that creates you know this mosaic. Not exactly a mosaic though, because it. I mean, it just it it creates like a bigger picture. All of them together kind of feels more wholesome, more holistic. I think. Yeah. I was raised Catholic and yeah, I mean I I rejected it a lot growing up. I like really resisted it and I felt like I was being kind of forced to participate. But I really didn't want to. And so yeah, I just had that little that that angst about me towards that. And then um, after the first time I did ayahuasca, I felt like I felt so much more open to learning and to, to returning to that that religion that I was raised in, that I was brought up in, you know, the religion of not all my ancestors, but like my at least like my European ancestors. And there's I found so much wisdom. I definitely wasn't listening before, but when I when I approached it with an open mind, yeah, there's there's it's deep. It can get really, mm. really, really deep. What about you? What's what's your view with religion? I was asked that at a recent interview that I gave um, at Yale, and they asked me where I stand with spirituality and religion or versus religion or, you know, 
And uh, it's interesting that you said, you know, that they're like all different pieces of a puzzle that then combine to make something together. Um, I see it's similar, but yet different. I feel like they're all like leading to the same destination. They're all pointing into the same direction and they're all emanating from the same source. So yeah, I'm like, okay, um, what, what is being said here? I'm like, you know, so, all right, let's remove the robe. Let's put down the fucking, I don't know, the candles and the, and the and the gold and put all that away um and let's look at the stories let, let, let's look at what what the people you know what the message is what what's being said here um on a deeper level um away from the stories and the characters and and whatnot and that's where i find commonalities that's where i find um like the like like an onion, you know, we and the religion is all the different layers that help people from all different walks of life to find their unique way to relating to the source of the onion, to the co co to the center of the onion. But you know, we we have to, you know, find different layers for different folks, you know? Um, because different, uh, what are different strokes for different folks? So what, what's the saying? I think like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you have, you know, you have people who need pictures. You need people who, I don't know, need a physical space to go to, you know, a building that they can enter. Some people, you know, they need songs. Fuck, give them songs, you know, give them something, give them a book, give them something to read. Give them um, a painting. Give them a story. Give them a face. Give them something. And that helps them. And then with other people, it's just like, nah, dude, man, just give me, give me the connection. Give me, you know, the communion of church, for example, or religion. And that's where I experience the divine. So I feel like, yeah, it's just the onion, you know, it's just the onion with all the layers. And if you peel it back uh, far enough, you just end up with the source at the end. So I'm always like the picture I have in my head is just like Buddha and there's Jesus and there is, you know, Allah and, you know, they're all lining up. And they're just like, you know, like that, like bros all in, yeah. in, in arms and they're looking down and they're just like, Oh God, like when will they understand? You know, we're all saying the same thing. Um, but yeah, um, I get it. I get it. You know, humans, you know, we, we like to, you know, the ego, you know, we like to feel safe. We need something to hold on to. And, you know, it's like, it makes perfect sense. And that's also makes perfect sense when I'm thinking of religion, like why, but I, I don't know. Like Paula, honestly, I'm like, it's, I don't know, now at 30, I'm like, just like, dude, it's so obvious when religion gets used as a, an extension of someone's ego. Like I, or when religion is being used to oppress and something. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just like, it's so obvious. Like you're using something and you, I don't know, something that is so... I don't know, like human and so <clears throat> I don't know I don't even know how to how to say it in a different way. Uh but I feel like as soon as like humans fuck with with source, you can spot it. Like it's getting quite obvious. It's just like, ah, oh, okay, well now here we go again. You know, you're trying to use the message to divide. You know, how boring, you know, how fucking boring, you know, um, but it worked and it still works sometimes, but I feel like collectively we are getting more sensitive to picking up on, on the bullshit that is between the lines, um, of, you know, what's being sold as religion 
But I feel like Jesus is the most misunderstand being on earth, you know? He was like this rebel who was like super brave and like a badass, like a spiritual badass. Like he would really, you know, put himself out there. He was like, fuck that. Like I'm rewriting the narrative here and I'm not just like preaching. I'm living it, you know, I'm living through it like myself. Like I'm showing you the way literally. Um, and then what they basically made out of him, I'm just like, oh my God. Like if he was here, if he could speak right now. I guess he would really like, I don't know. I believe he would like voice that we got it a little bit wrong. <laughs> well, some of us got it wrong. Yeah, I don't know. That's my take on it. Do you think you would say that uh, we got it wrong to idolize him? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What what's the line? What's the line? I I I I see if I can pull it. Um, you should sit by my throne. Um, you should do great things and even greater things. Uh, something along the lines of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah, something along. So the as line. I sit by the throne of my father, as I sit by the throne of my father, um, you 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 should sit here too and do great things and even greater things than I did or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. it's about that. It's not like, he's like, yes, I'm showing you something. I'm doing something, but so should you. Yeah. Even greater and, things. Yeah. And then that should implies can. You can do greater things. You should because you, you, you can. And you can. Oh, yeah. Guess what you should. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I really feel like it doesn't matter if Jesus never existed or if any of these prophets ever really existed and they, they were just written. They're just their stories. Like it doesn't, I personally don't think it matters. I think the fact that that wisdom that accompanies them, that's, that's the bread and like that is, that's it you know doesn't matter yeah. if these people they like we have the wisdom yeah but they 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 are the um the vehicles through which god delivered the wisdom to us you know i mean but that's so, so and so it is with art truly 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 i mean yeah i, mean, I Go ahead. I'm looking at I'm looking at provenance right now. Just open the tab, okay? So I was looking at you, but now I'm looking at provenance, your painting. Mm -hmm. Um. And I've seen it live, so now I'm seeing it digitally. Um. And I see God working through you. Um, that's what makes this, all of your picture, all of your painting. I just pulled it up now. So it was the first thing that come, came here, came up here. Um, the choices of colors of shapes everything how that how what i'm looking at right now is um is a result of the divine working through you but through you through everything that you have been through everything that you have experienced in this lifetime the skills you acquired that allowed you to use a brush in the way that you did to paint this picture. So that is just like a new way for me to experience art, um, any art for that matter, 
But now I'm looking at this and I'm just see, I'm, I see you. I see God. I see him, her, it working through you. And it's fucking beautiful because it's, it's unique. There's, it's just one way this could go. And this is what came out. Yeah, right. That's is... that. That's such a mystery too. Of all the ways it could possibly have gone, that's the way it went. And like, why? Yeah. Like, why though? Why that color palette, for example? You know, there's there's so much that is so specific, but it's like, whoa, why? Uh, you know. I don't know. Well, because you are here. You are here as a as a vehicle for the divine and let me tell you that like you got the fine antennas you got you know you developed you, you you're honing that thing you're developing that connection through to the divine over and over and over and over again and uh now sitting here end of march 2024 fuck i'm excited to see where it's going with you you know i'm like what what on earth is like she's gonna just get better from here like even every day you know it's just just like you know you you're getting even closer to source you know not by downgrading what you have created not at all not, not at all it's not linear you know uh all all of it it's just like channeled um and yet i'm i'm, I'm super excited to see what's to come thank you me too what are you excited about? I'm excited about all the various ways that I'm going to get to express myself artistically. Not just through painting, but through through music. Once I have my instruments back with me. Through uh, tattooing. <laughs> Um, and through 3D, 3D things like ceramics, but even larger than that architecture, because my, my dream art project, dream art project is to design and build my own home and like design the layout of the land and like where where everything is going to go and how the garden is going to be shaped and designed and everything is just going to be so, so me, you know? And then to live in that, to live, oh my God, it just sounds so freaking dreamy. And I just want to have people over all the time and like, I don't know, yeah, I have community gatherings, but like in this container that is entirely designed by me, entirely. Like, down to, like, the texture of the walls. Like, I have so many ideas. I have so many ideas. And and this is something that I think about every day. And and I think it's starting to dawn on me that I think um, everything that I'm doing is for that greater goal. And I don't even know what that greater goal is for. You know, I think I'll find out once I get there and once, once it starts manifesting. And, like, the, you know, what, what the deeper purpose of constructing that will be and i i assume it'll be something related to community you know um because i find i find community really beautiful really really a really important part of my life um as well as solitude i can't live without my solitude Ugh. so yeah i think i lost my train of thought but What what's it with solitude? It's it's just deeply blissful. I find I find solitude blissful and then connecting with people joyful. So but the 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 need for solitude is so is so intense. Is so intense. 
I feel like I can really just be present with my thoughts and present with my priorities and concentrate. And I think I, you know, it makes for an easier time to to download things. I think, yeah. I really love going hiking by myself. I love traveling by myself. I love doing long road trips by myself. Um, you know, it just feels like, it just feels like me. It's me in the universe. And there's, there's no, you know, it, it's just like a very direct experience. And I love to bask in that. I love to bask in it. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's satisfying. It's comfortable for me. Um, it's comforting. You know, I know, I know that there's other people that can't, can't really say that, you know, being alone is like not, is not a pleasant thing for a lot of people. And I pray, I pray for those people because damn, like it's, it can be so beautiful. It can be so profound to just spend time by yourself and just be sober too. Like you don't have to be doing things. But just be spending time by yourself. And it's just, like I said, it's just you and the universe. And yeah, being, you know, other people around you, that's also a part of the universe. I'm not discounting that. But that's like a whole different kind of interaction. So, mm. Yeah. My mom doesn't understand why I need so much solitude. <laughs> she thinks that I'm going to like, I don't know, like put myself into like this, this habit of like being by myself so much that I, I like end up alone or something. Mm. What's but, the relationship with your mom like? How would you describe that? I feel like it improves. It just constantly is improving. Yeah. When I was a teenager, it used to be kind of rough. And then I moved away from college. And I think I need, we needed, we both needed that distance. And things just started looking up from there. Yeah. Um, I think we both still need to exercise a lot of patience with each other. Because uh, we're very different people. Very different worldviews and ideas. But like, yeah, the love, the love is very, very deep. Mm. And with my father, the same thing too. We have a good relationship. Very, he's a very quiet person. I feel like I, I take after him too, because he, he likes his quiet time. He likes his solitude. Like he likes to just like get really. Um, he likes to just think. And educate himself, and I love all that. I love all that. My mom is like the, let's get shit done, like, and like, very outgoing. Very like, let's let's interact, let's network, and I love that. I love that too. Yeah. So I think I have a really great balance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I that's how I experienced you. Like I I would say Yeah, introverted extrovert maybe, you know. Like I feel like you Yeah, you're highly, highly sociable and uh and then, yeah, it's a yin and yang, you know? And then, like, expansion, contraction. Expansion, contraction. It's beautiful yeah. that you're, like, you you, you you see that represented in your, both of your parents in, in the way that you do. Um, mm, yeah. How would you say a... your father... Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, there, there's... There was time and place for both energies. Yeah. That's, that's it. 
how would you father uh, how would you say your father expresses his love towards you i think he i think he does it by listening to me i think he's a very great listener he listens to like absorb and understand um he's also like a very playful man likes to make a lot of jokes and like likes to um, likes to kind of like poke our humor out of us mm love that so that he can enjoy our humor as well <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it's a it's a good time yeah and i guess my mom it's interesting because i feel i feel my dad's love it feels very yin and my mom's love feels very yang she's very like on top of our needs very like how are you are you okay um she will plan my whole ass life out if she had to she yeah she like she's like the structure creator slash maintainer yeah and mm. damn yeah yeah i don't think i don't think my family would be like where we are if it wasn't for her like like her, all her effort like she makes a lot of effort yeah and my dad too like not to say that my dad doesn't make effort but just it's just a different kind it's just a different flavor like his is Did more you tell her his. That? i haven't honestly no i should yeah 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 these are things that i should express mm. and my my dad's effort is more of a leash name yeah how would you say that they um if um did they influence what you're doing now? How would I say... How would I say they influence what I'm doing now? Is what... Yeah. Um... I think they have been... Probably my biggest blessing... I grew up being told that I had a gift. You have a gift. You're so gifted. Oh my God. You're so like endowed boy, with this ability, whatever. And like growing up, I didn't know any better. So I just ate it up. But, but I realized that no, like that's not really, I wasn't, first of all, I wasn't born with these abilities. Like I was born with the inclination, I guess. And I cultivated these these abilities these this this these talents so it's not really a gift like i cultivated it but i think the real gift is having is having the parents that i have because they they've been they've been so supportive yeah um and like that seems to be a pretty rare thing in in the lives of like other people around me you know to have to have two parents that like are equally as invested in you and don't try to stop you from pursuing the things that light you up and in fact like try to enable you and yeah that's been my that's been my biggest blessing wow yeah for real Mm -hmm. yeah i'm happy for you it's beautiful <laughs> it's super nice um yeah mm. 
well, you know, where you are today and what you're creating, I mean, it's not just something we say that ancestors and the people that came before us that they shape what we're doing. Um, but it's right there. They're in it. You know, they are so. in it. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. Fucking beautiful. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for asking those questions. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm just looking at, you know, I'm just coming out of the weekend with my parents and yeah, it's just, they're just wonderful people and uh, I don't know, for so long I've just been so caught up in my own mess that I just couldn't see that. And I projected so much of my own shit onto them. Just because they're my parents, they should have known the answers. Whereas now I'm moving more towards the understanding that. <laughs> oh my God. They're just like. My mom has been three years younger than I am today when she got me shit. So <laughs> how would I, how would I expect her to know anything when I'm reflecting on where I was three years ago about life and death and everything in between. And so that, that humility sort of helps me to meet them halfway in a whole different way. Like I just see, I just see a human instead of my dad or my mom. Not always. Uh, it works especially well when we're apart and when I have a distance and then I can, you know, that facilitates a more distant more distance and that makes me able like that does it like if i was to walk into the house where i grew up in uh that puts me subconsciously into a little maxi um whereas it's easier now that both are in new environments so i can show up and just be like Hey, mom, how was that for you when you were 15 and you were first in love with that guy that you told me about? How was that for you? That, curio that curiosity, you know, that just objective curiosity that I am engaging with, with the world, I'm engaging with, with you. Why can I not do that with my parents? That's a little bit sort of like the thing that I switched for me and just when i'm thinking about my dad like pff, yeah so much um so much weight that this man carried and now here i am judging him as a 17 year old <laughs> no something's wrong like i don't know that that was me but now i can see it clearly and i'm just like yeah uh so much respect for everything that he did for me for us for the family um yeah Yeah, I feel like at some point we we become the age or surpass the age that our parents 
had us at. And we realized that, you know, they never really, they're, they're just trying to figure it out too, you know? They're just kids in this world also. Yeah. They don't have, they never had all the answers. But to us, they were like gods. Right. These these people would know. These people know. And therefore, you know, we as angsty teens felt almost like justified to use them as our punching bag. Because they weren't giving us the answers that perhaps we thought we, we like we should be getting from them. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So much. So much. It probably explains why we can't... Why why we... It's just such a different interaction with them versus with anybody else. Yeah. They probably see the absolute worst of us. More than anybody else will ever see, probably. You know... Yeah. Hmm. What would you say? Um, have you felt unconditional love in your life? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Because there's been times where I've just been a little piece of shit. And still I just feel so much love pouring in from my from my parents particularly. Mm. Mm. Which is such a, like again, like this is such a blessing and like you know, I don't, I don't take that for granted, because that's not everyone's reality, unfortunately. Yeah. So I feel, I feel super blessed. Mm. Yeah. So make sure they know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I definitely know would be. Why is it so hard, too? <laughs> like, why is it so awkward? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was so much shame for me as well. Holy shit. But then I also, I don't know. I also found that there's like many ways, many roads to the mountain. And I had like a predestined like version of like, how that looks like for for example my dad and myself and i don't know it turned out to be very different now so i was like no like you sit him down you look him in the eye you tell him you love him that's how you do it you know um but no like no like <laughs> the universe just worked it, it's magic and it it, it facilitated the tragic circumstance that forced me if i would wanted to put it frame it in that way or allowed me to hold space for him mm -hmm. and that way we got very so much closer together so it's different you know that conversation never happened that way but so much else happened you know just me showing up for him and me yeah yeah just being in hospitals with him and seeing him in that state you know and witnessing you know and that's so beautiful like everything that i've experienced and i'm wearing the sacred sun's hoodie doing this work you know then allowed me to witness him no fixing you know there's no oh dad try this you know no you shouldn't be doing that no like it was just a witnessing 
and with that came so much oh that was so beautiful like yeah that's 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 the that's then the love and then you know i'm also finding with having him not express and say it with the words that i want to hear i don't know like no he just has his way of showing what you know but i know it's there like it's obvious it's so obvious like it's right there so yeah um and my mom the same way like it's different but the same yeah she's just yeah i'm very proud of my parents yeah proud of my parents what are you proud of in my parents no like in general what are you proud of I'm proud of my boldness because I've taken a lot of risks. Um, and those risks, you know, big or small, always end up shaping me in one way or another. You know, even socially, like things that I, just like outcomes that I would never think of um the fact that i chose to do something that scared me that yeah that that's that's what i'm proud of you know and obviously that's something that's something that i find scary to do has like a greater benefit or purpose if i if i can manage to to get it, I guess, or create it, or become it. So yeah, I would say that's something that I'm very proud of. Mm. Yeah. What are you proud of? It's <laughs> Uh, I guess that's what you set yourself up to if you ask those questions. Eventually, somebody just asks you, so what about you, man? Uh, well, so it's funny because I have a different or difficult relationship to the word pride and proud. So, um, Because I feel like, you know, on a, on a worldly level, I can answer that question. And then I also know that it has nothing to do with me. So, yeah. But, yeah, I am proud of not ignoring and never stopping to, l f to listen to... my heart uh, no matter how hard it was on a worldly level and is um and i cannot even be proud of it because i just cannot do it any other way yeah. so even if i was to try it like I, and even if i i did already some like partially at some stages in my life i, I tried to like ignore it and i tried to push through and do things another way and stuff like that but uh, it never st never stick never stuck it always no it just i always return to quit something that went into that direction and to return to what it is that i truly am here to do and that is um a beautiful burden it's a beautiful burden that more and more I realize that this is like, I don't know, my soul just chose this plane this time. And it's a, hard, it's a harder one. And it's a one with a lot of, uh, I don't know, with a lot of privilege. And out of that privilege comes a lot of responsibility that I am very aware of. So I'm like, 
very aware of the gifts that I was given and and the and the and the privileges that I was re- given, and out of that grows a big responsibility towards creation that I feel on my shoulders every day. So, yeah, I'm proud of. Um, Of taking it on, yeah, and, uh, and and not shying away from it, showing up every day, showing mm-hmm. up every day, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's, that's how way I would to answer live. this question. Mm. Um. Wow. Well, um. How are you feeling right now? I feel like I've just we've we've been on a trip. <laughs> <laughs> this this has been a really cool conversation. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. Yeah, I feel 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 very good very good um and i feel like i've never been as present uh with any one of my guests as i've been today with you um which is like funny because like <laughs> I mean, this is just like the universe again, because it's it's something that I've been putting out into the universe, which then made me reach out to you because I was branching out into a different space with the podcast where I'm like, I want to talk more about, you know, like I told you, you know, about stories and people and um, not like re- representatives for a topic. And it's just like, okay, this person speaks about yoga and this person speaks about men's work and this person, no. So it's more like, you know, who is this person? And I feel like I I, I spoke that into, like I, I, I manifested that subconsciously and here we are. And I, and it fulfills me with deep gratitude and, uh, and and i'm and, and i'm yeah uh, i yeah i'm in awe of 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 what we've created me too that's very special very special yeah yeah um this is the this you is feel the complete most... yeah yeah yeah, honestly, this is the most relaxed I've ever felt at, in, in any interview. <laughs> I feel like I've just been able to flow really well. It's done. So thank you. Yeah, for it's holding. funny. I've been I've been trying to come up with um what what what's my purpose on this planet, and I've been trying to name that for so long. Like I need it. I I need I need a one liner that I can throw out in a panel discussion when somebody asks me you know it's just like really so bro in the back what's your purpose and i want to stand up and say something you know yeah and uh and <laughs> and then I, I i i reached out to someone that i desperately wanted to talk to on the podcast and he in that case he was like yeah, bro, I, 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 I love you. I love what you're doing, but uh, I'm not your guy. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not that kind of, like, I'm not an out, like an outgoing, I, I, I don't like to talk about myself. That's not what I do. And in order to sort of like, I don't know, and then, I don't know, it just flowed through me. My reply was just like, I respect you tremendously. I love you. Um but I need to tell you that my purpose is to create a space f- 
for people to feel safe to share from the heart. And it just flowed out like that. And I sent that to him. And then two days later, I, I, I still had that in my, it was still, I don't know, within my being. It was just like, did I just say that? Like, I don't know. That feels very good. That's what I've been doing for like one and a half years now, weekly on a podcast. And what I've been doing my whole life with people in my life. I don't know, just showing up and not always, obviously, you know, it's not with 15. I haven't been doing this, but now I do. This, every interaction is like that. I'm like, just like, I don't know, even subconsciously. And so finding something that on a worldly level, you know, that I can do, you know, using this microphone and this camera and la 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 to bring this to life. Yeah, it feels beautiful and purposeful and fulfilling and something worth doing. <laughs> so was that your yeah. one liner? Did you did you did you find it in that moment? Yeah, it's like my Ask. purpose is to create spaces for people to sh share from the heart. That's that's I feel part of my purpose well i think you're really good at it <laughs> thank Absolute. you um thank you um yeah well let's let's see where this is going and um i'm excited to see you grow i'm excited to see you expand and and share your light with the world um i th i believe it's it's unbelievably courageous what you're doing um i personally just very much resonate with what you're painting what you're creating um it speaks to me i see you in it um and on top of that i just feel like you're you're a wonderful human being um and really enjoy spending time with you so thank you thank you maxi you you are also a very very lovely human thank you for saying all that hey beautiful listener you have made it all the way through and i want to take a moment to say thank you and you can do me an enormous favor it's all i'm gonna ever ask from you and that is to go to your podcast app right now and if you enjoy the episode give the podcast a five star rating if you want to write one two words or sentences even more powerful even better um, thank you yeah already in advance and also while you're at it just click on that follow button on that bell notification so that you never miss a new episode all of that just contributes and it helps me to increase the reach of the podcast. That means I can attract bigger guests and that means I can deliver more powerful episodes. So the tiny thing, I'm only going to ask this little favor of you ever, not more, 10, 15 seconds of your time, a couple of clicks, that's it. it makes a huge difference for me as a creator. So thank you so much. <laughs>